Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll look through a simple tool that will help us to develop our socket IO backend. Okay, it's a simple tool that is a client, a socket client that's already been pre-built. Okay, so we can we simply provide the domain or the URL to the server and we can connect to that socket. We can listen to bunch of events and we can trigger an event from this client as well. So let's get started that I'll create a simple node project okay now let's create the index file I will simply create a STP server server we need to provide some handler to the server let's create that right response to right hello Listen. Listen to eight thousand and this. Include the site script as well. Let's start it. Okay. Now, if we take our local server, okay, okay, we have to provide this handler to the create server first. Now, so let's restart it and it's to work as expected. Okay, now let's integrate the socket IO. Let's install, install that first. So it will install the latest socket IO. So here it installed 4.0. Okay, so for that uh, in this tool, we'll use there are different versions available as well. So we'll use the application for the 4.0.1. Okay, client. Okay, now let's start socket as well. The socket I is exporting server. Now we can create the server here. I think it's new server which will accept the HTTP server. Server and option. Okay, in the option we provide cross option with origin to be true. So we do allow any request from any origin. Okay, if you if, if you have to provide any origin or restrict to some origin you will simply provide them here okay your domain name okay. now um let's listen to any event on that um connection to get the socket and log user connect Okay, it just should be connected. Now let's restart the server and let's try to connect. Okay. Is the URL and 
provide it and let's hit connect and we get the user connected okay now this application is acting as a client for our this socket okay so one client is connected okay now let's talk about this query thing i'll talk about this namespace next and uh, this query are we can provide some key value during the connection so like jwt token for authentication we can do that for that let's introduce a middleware that use just to add authentication here it will accept what um uh, socket give socket and next have the socket and the next matter here and can get this query on that let's i will give a query name key and we'll provide some key here so we'll get that key from socket dot and say dot query dot key okay so we'll get that key and if the key exists the key exists do is we'll call the next okay so it will, if the connection had that query key it will simply pass the connection to the next if the user is not providing any key uh, it won't pass okay so we can check that as well let's restart the server first so here is no user connected at and if i provide like a run here as a key if it connect and the user should be connected and let's try that again and if i simply hit connect here it won't connect okay because this it, it won't pass to this check okay and what we can do is based on if in the real world we'll we'll use some json jwt token here and we'll simply decode that token and assign the information in the socket user or whatever variable you want okay so for for testing i'll simply assign the user property to the socket and with name being the key okay so in the real world you'll simply just decode that and assign that object to whatever object you will use next okay and that's it for that's it for the connection establishment now we have the user information as well and if the, they provide the key we'll establish the connection okay let's make some event socket on so the user can send the message data and let's assume that we have text message there data dot data dot message there is the, the text string message in the message property of the data and we'll simply broadcast that okay okay dot broadcast init let's use the same message variable here and we'll forward the message and we'll forward this user information okay cmd here who's the sender sender is socket that user that socket sender is user okay and that's it now uh, just to check that if we got the masses log here got assets assets from socket user dot yeah let's restart it and Let's refresh this as well. So we we'll provide the key with name run to connect and we'll listen to any message event. Listen to any message event and we can trigger and trigger the event uh, and the structure, the data for the that should be in this structure, at least for 
adds these two uh, as I'm using uh, I'll, I'm just parsing this using JSON parser so this should be a validation and as we remember from the structure it will accept the message and if you emit it and we should we got message hello from Ram okay now let's connect another user here as well let's keep her name G of Sita let's connect her and let's listen the message and now this user is listening this client is listening and so whenever the user send and this user this event should be received to the under client as well okay and we got the event as well. okay so that's why you can develop your socket application socket backend socket io backend even if the front end development is a bit behind and you can test a new feature or develop new test new events and you don't have to worry about the front end and testing even if in case the front end is mobile device it will take some time so this will be useful okay now let's talk about this namespace let's create another namespace Admin namespace io dot op admin admin uh, okay okay admin dot com connection socket Space. okay now let's replace it and let's copy this replace this and let's connect to the ad and admin namespace it connect and we connect to the admin namespace okay now uh, that's the two now uh, this will be useful um, for developing your socket application and this this is kind of postman for your socket socket i yeah that's it have a good day and here is the url okay socket io.blogonnepal.com okay thank you have a good day bye bye